you outside. Because then I'll be kidding. I'm filming today and what film has to offer. In what us. way, Nick? In what way? Because yeah, we, we have to do a at least one time lapse. On what? I'll do a time lapse with Jacob Brennan and Stone. Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about famous Italian neorealism film, The Bicycle Thief. And, hey, that's my, hey, give me my bike back, hey! So, like I said earlier, I'm going to talk about The Bicycle Thief and how it is a perfect example of the Italian neorealism film movement, which is also a part of the modernist art movement. The main conflict involves lower classman Antonio Ricci and his struggle to keep his job which would be a topic very relatable to Italians in the 1940s. By analyzing the cinematography, editing, and mise-en-scene at the end of the movie, I will show you why this film is a perfect example of an Italian neorealism film. Conflicts in Italian neorealism films are purely based on realistic problems that everyday people face, such as losing your job, trying to keep your job, trying to feed your family, mostly based on that. And the cinematography in this movie really shows a moral dilemma of how far a person will go to be able to feed his family, to be able to keep his job. Anto Antonio is, at the end of the movie, Antonio is debating whether or not he should steal someone else's bike so he can keep his job and feed his family, or be a good example for his son. And uh, the cinematography exhibits this by dollying back and forth um, as you can see, when Antonio turns a corner, the, the dolly follows him, and you can see the bike to his left. And then when he walks back around, back around the corner, the dolly follows him again, and you can see his son. And um, it really shows the conflict that's going on in between his mind, whether or not he should steal the bike and be able to feed and provide for his family, or he should not steal the bike and be a good example to his son. The mise-en-scene also really wants to convey this idea that there's a moral dilemma going on in Antonio's head. Um, when he finally decides to steal the bike, he's in the shade. He's very dark, and then when he goes over to the bike, he is just a shadow. He's just a silhouette of himself. And while he's on the bike, you can't really see the features on his face, and it really shows it. He's just a silhouette of the good man that he once was. Editing during the Italian neorealism movement was much like classical Hollywood. There was no crazy transitions. They really didn't try to revolutionize editing in any way. Um, but they really wanted to, again, like cinematography and mise-en-scene, want to show the conflict going on in Antonio's mind. Um, they used a bunch of eyeline match cuts. Uh, first he gets up and he looks at a, a load of bikes, hundreds of bikes, and it cuts to those bikes, and it cuts back to him, and he turns and he looks at his son, and it cuts down to his son, and it cuts back to Antonio while he walks around the corner and looks at the single bike alone, and it cuts to that bike again, then it cuts back to Ant Antonio as he turns back around and looks at the bikes and turns back again, and all these cuts really just, really just emphasize how much conflict is going through his head and what he's what he's dealing with inside. The last point I wanted to make was about the ending, a little observation that I had. Um, Antonio and Bruno, they walk into the sunset, and usually walking into the sunset, or going into the sunset, is good. The main characters have won, they've accomplished whatever their goal was, and everything goes happily ever after. But in this, I think what the director Vittorio De Sica was trying to tell us is that there are no happy endings. They're just like in modern, in modern times, in modern days, especially in Italy, um, not everything is fixed perfectly, not everything can be happily ever after, and just like the, just like most Italian neorealistic films, um, there's, it's an open ending. It's open for interpretation for us to see, and um, I interpret it as just a complete switch of what we usually view walking in the sunset as.